two, three, fuck it. My darling, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Welcome to the series of me trying to finish every single series I'm in the middle of. Last time I checked four books off my list and now it's time to tackle my list again. I've got 19 series I'm looking to finish, so let's get reading. I am starting this video off with The Final Gambit, which is the third book in the Inheritance Game series. If you're not familiar with the Inheritance Game series, which you should know all about it by now because it's amazing, you should already be reading it. It's about this teenage girl who inherits billions of dollars from a stranger. It's a really fun young adult mystery. It's got riddles and the mystery of like, why did this guy leave her all this money? There's secret passageways in his house that she moves into. And then the billionaire also has four grandsons and there's a romance subplot going on there. So yeah, it's really good. I'm currently on page 207. I've been reading for the past week and I'm so close to the end. I just want to know all the answers to the current mystery that we're in. I think I want to go sit at Starbucks and read. This book has like some mild, like dark academia kind of vibes. And so I don't know, I feel like sitting at a coffee shop just feels like a fitting setting to read this book. I accidentally got the larger size drink. It was so huge that there was absolutely no way I could finish it, but I'm loving the book. It moves so fast paced, which I love. And I love that every time I think we're about to unravel the mystery, we're hit with another twist. Guys, when I was leaving, this couple was arguing so loud. I think I just witnessed a couple break up. She was crying and he was like, give me the keys. Like I'm going back to our place. I'm gonna take all my stuff and get out. Like I never wanna see you again. He was like, you're so mean to me. Like you're cruel to me. Like I will literally never speak to you again. <laughs> it was so uncomfortable, but also I'm nosy. I really wanna know like, what did she do to be called like, cruel and mean and him like never want to see her again. I feel like I was living in a real life third act conflict of a romance novel, but I don't know if it has a happy ending. It doesn't sound like it. Anyway, I got super far in the final game, but I have like 20 pages left. I'm really obsessed. I want to finish reading it right now. I always see people read in their car, like in YouTube, like reading vlogs and I've never read my car. It just doesn't sound ideal. Like it doesn't sound comfy. Also like, do I leave my car running? Like what are the logistics? I don't know. So I'm going to try reading in my car for the last 20 pages. See if I like it. I got to the end. I didn't know what to expect for the end, but it ended so perfectly. Like it, there's no other ending that could be more fitting. I definitely didn't expect the ending, but like I love Avery Kylie Grams for the ending. Anyway, on to the epilogue. It is one year later. I finished it. Okay, uh, I'm so excited. It was so good. I think I would say, 4.5 stars for this one. I'm pretty sure I gave the first two books in the series five stars. Definitely a five star series overall. I just feel like in the first two books, it was like a little more magical of like fresh magic of her inheriting this billions and being thrust into this whole new life. And by this book, she's a lot more into the life and we're more focusing on like getting answers. But yeah, still so good. Also, in case anyone is wondering for the romance subplot, there is a love triangle. I have always been and always will be team Jameson. But something that I do love about this romance subplot is that like she could end up with Jameson or Grayson and I would be happy either way. Like I love both of them so much, which is rare for me in love triangles. Normally I am very passionately one person and like super angry if it doesn't go my way. I wish that I could delete this off my every series I'm in the middle of list, but there is a fourth book coming out called The Brothers Hawthorne that comes out in August. And I read the description for it and definitely focuses more on Grayson and Jameson, which I feel like is gonna be cool to have like them as our main characters. I'm sure Avery will still be in it. I hope in the fourth book we get more of Zan and Nash, especially Nash, because I feel like he just kind of has cameos and scenes in the books, but I want to like know more of his story. I'm excited to read the next book in August. Anyway, next up, I have some plans with friends. And then when I get home tonight, I will pick out the next series I want to work on finishing. Before I go hang out with my friends, I think I want to fresh 
section up a little bit. I got sent this portable hair straightener from Timo, who has kindly sponsored today's video. Ooh, it comes in a little case. That is so nice. That also fits its charger. So you can easily charge it in your car if you need to. And with hair clips, so you can help section off the sections of your hair when you straighten them. This is the perfect size. I love how portable this is. And I have never used it before, so I'm really excited to try it for the first time with you guys. It has three heat settings. I'm gonna use the high setting because my hair is very thick. Okay, I sectioned off some of my hair, some of my roots here. I don't know if you guys can tell, got a little wavy. It's so humid outside and my hair really reacts to humidity. So it's really nice to have a portable hair straightener when I'm on the go. Okay. Oh my gosh, that worked so well. It's nice that it's a brush too. So it's also like brushing through my hair while it's straightening it. I'm gonna try this back piece that has like a little bit of wave to it. Oh my gosh, that worked so well. That's like pencil straight. Okay, wait, I love that. I think I'm gonna keep this in my car. I feel like, like I said, it's just perfect for on the go. You could also so easily toss this in your purse or a tote bag and take it with you. Hello, I'm in a public bathroom. I just tossed this in my bag today. Like I cannot get over how portable it is. literally a lifesaver i also feel like this would be perfect for traveling i'm going to chicago at the end of the month and i'm definitely gonna throw this in my suitcase outside of their portable hair straightener timo also has a ton of other hair products from curlers hair dryers to hair care products they also sent me their hair oil which smooths and nourishes hair it's great for smoothing frizz expelling flyaways or just adding shine to your hair and it provides heat protection which i desperately need i straighten my hair almost every single day so i know my hair is probably like fried by now Make sure to click the link in my description to check out Timo and all of their hair care products. Okay, I've got the big stack of books that represent all the series I'm in the middle of where the next book I need to read is already out. You know what? Let's go through my all the series I'm in the middle of list really quick. I've got 11 series where the next book I need to read is out so I can actively work on finishing that series. I've got eight series where the next book I need to read isn't out yet. And then I've got nine series that I'm not continuing, abandoning those. So technically I'm in the middle of 28 series, but only 19 of them do I plan on finishing and only 11 of them can I finish. Now, which series to work on finishing next honestly i think i'm most excited about starting the atlas paradox this is a sequel to the atlas six but there's gonna be a third book which doesn't come out till i think january part of me is like uh do i want to read this book and then i'm gonna have to wait a long time again to get the third book i feel like i always prefer if i can just read a whole series back to back so i'm hesitant to start the atlas paradox the other book i'm most excited about is the american roommate experiment which is the sequel to the spanish love deception i freaking loved the spanish love deception i know it has mixed reviews i see you i hear you i understand your complaints but i fully disagree i love that book so much five stars so i'm really excited to read the sequel which follows a different couple so it can be read as a standalone but it takes place in the same universe same like crossover characters which book i think i have to go with the american roommate experiment let's start this romance Good morning. I got really into this book last night and this morning. I read a page 76. It's just so nice being back in an Elena Armas book. The only other book I've read by her is The Spanish Love Deception. And I don't know, something about her books just feel like a warm hug and kind of like crack. Like I'm obsessed. I just want to read all day. It's about Rosie. She lives in New York City. Something happens to her apartment. There's like a huge hole in her ceiling. So she uses her spare key to go stay with her friend Lena, who's on her honeymoon. So she's staying in Lena's empty apartment, but she doesn't know that Lena's cousin Lucas from Spain was already planning to stay in Lena's empty apartment. <laughs> so they decide they're going to be temporary roommates, make it work. And Rosie knows who Lucas is and has always had this like huge crush on him and Loki like internet stalked him. So you and your crush like are forced to share a studio apartment. Are you kidding? I'm there. I'm here for this book. Anyway, I kind of I'm feeling like a really like self-care day for some reason. It's just calling to me. So I think I'm gonna run a bath and read in the bath. I've been reading in the bath a lot more recently and it's just so nice.
Luke is not too sure about all this. He says, Mom, what are you doing? All the bubbles are over here. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's so many bubbles on this end. Now we have bubbles here. And the water is so pink, which I feel like just matches like reading a romance book. But also these bubbles are kind of a struggle because like now I have to wipe off my hands before I can get my book. Reading in the bath has its hardships. The bath bomb I used is from Lush. Oh, I should have grabbed it so I could show you guys. I really love it. It's my first time trying like one of their like bubble bath bombs and like it delivers on the bubbles and the color. I used to always get the rainbow bath bombs, which are really fun, but then your water is like brown after the rainbow all dissolves. I think I'm going with solid color bath bombs from now on. Got a cookie, some cranberry juice. So I'm gonna get like wine or make a cocktail or something, but it is like noon. Also with a lush bath bomb, you can blow bubbles with it, which is crazy. It doesn't work like super perfectly, but like how fun and interactive. Okay, let's get reading. So far, I've read to chapter nine, page 107. I love that I feel like the characters feel so complex. Like Rosie had this big fancy job and she quit it to be a romance writer. So she's taking like this huge leap and is in this like huge transitional phase in her life. And then Lucas was a pro surfer living in Spain and we don't know exactly what's going on with him. He has come to America on vacation, but it kind of seems like he's more so running away from something. But yeah, I'm just loving that we've learned so much about Rosie, but we're still unraveling so much about Lucas. I read a page 140 and I think I'm gonna stop here for now. We are starting to get into the heart of the plot. I read the summary of this book so long ago and I honestly forgot this was like a part of the summary, but basically Rosie, you know, she's trying to write a romance book and she's got hardcore writer's block. So she thinks like going on dates will like help her get into like the romance writing mood. And Lucas agrees to basically kind of like fake date her to give her like romance inspiration, which is so fun like kind of unrealistic, but like so fun. So they're like living together, going on these like fake dates. And I feel like it's gonna get so messy and confusing and adorable, like so fast. Okay, I am gonna get out of the bath now. And then I'll probably do a little more reading this afternoon. It is much later. I think we're around page 200 now. I don't know. I have like a love-hate relationship with slow burns. I love them. I feel like they're like crack to me because it takes so long for the characters to get together. I feel like I can't put the book down until the characters get together. But at the same time, I feel like in most every slow burn I've read, there's like that point in like the middle where I feel like it can get like a little too slow. Like it's like, okay, let's move it along a little bit. And that's where I feel like I'm at. Again, still like crack, cannot put it down, but I wish there was just a little more romance nuggets that we would have gotten so far. All right, I'm gonna go read for the 15 minutes that this face mask sits for. I look like an ogre, like Fiona. <laughs> I am about to go to my parents to dog sit for them. So that's why I was packing. And I'm currently on page 243 and something happened that makes me so giddy. The characters have not even kissed. We are on page 243 and the characters haven't kissed at all, which is crazy. Like that's how slow burn it is. But Elena Armas still has a way of like having these like sweet, intimate, romantic moments while still not giving us that like physical contact or like them admitting their feelings and stuff that we just crave. But I feel like those moments she's giving me are like enough, like it's fueling me. Like I need to go and drive to my parents, but I just wanna lay in my bed and read the rest of the day. I'm kind of obsessed, I'm really obsessed. Anyway, because I'm going to my parents, I also need to pack the next book I wanna read. And these are all the series, oh, there's a cattail. <laughs> Hello, Luca. These are all the series where I own the next book in the series. And I think I'm gonna pack Chain of Thorns. This is the last book in the Last Hour series. So after I finish this book, I can cross the series off my list. And like something about just being able to cross the series out, like we're not waiting for any more books to come out or anything like that just feels so satisfying. And look how thick this book is. I was pulling like the biggest books off my bookshelf, like the Harry Potter books, the Akatar series, like trying to see what's the longest book I've read. And after I read this book, this will officially be the longest book I've read ever in my entire life. It's 778 pages long. And that's not even including the bonus scene at the end. That's 
that's crazy that's so long so we've got our work cut out for us i'll tell you guys more about this book and the plot of the series after i finish the american roommate experiment i'm gonna pack these two books and head to my parents i finished I'm freaking out. I already was like going back and rereading scenes. That's how much I loved it. I was looking at the reviews on Goodreads. Overall, this book has like 3.8 stars on Goodreads. And I was reading like what people thought about the book. And a lot of people say like it can move a bit slow. It's a little bit cheesy, cliche. And like, I see you, but I disagree with you. Five stars for me. I really freaking love this book. No, honestly, like I do agree with the critiques, but it didn't bother me at all. It's definitely a big romance movie, like grand gesture vibe, like kissing in the rain and running after someone at the airport, like those kind of cliched scenes, but I still loved it. Holy moly, I have been working all day and I was like, finally done working, time to sit outside and read in the evening, it's like less hot, you know, it'll be nice. I step outside, I'm like, oh, it kinda looks like it's gonna rain. I should probably turn back. I turn back, the wind is so strong that all of the patio furniture, my parents' patio, starts blowing off the patio at me. Like I'm standing like downhill of this like flying patio furniture. I almost just died just to find a good place to read a book. Can you guys hear the background noise? It's all wind. I feel like I'm in the Wizard of Oz when Dorothy's like about to blow away. Anyway, um, Chain of Thorns, which I will now be reading inside. I actually started the audiobook of this book a few weeks ago and the audiobook is 30 hours long. So even though I've been listening to it for a few weeks, I am 13 hours in, still have 16 hours left. And I think now I'm gonna switch over to reading the physical book. 13 hours in translates to page 378. So I'm like halfway-ish done. But yeah, I love this whole series. If you guys aren't familiar with Cassandra Clare, she has a ton of books that take place in this shadow hunter universe So I feel like if you're really ready to get invested in a fantasy world This is like a great series all the series you can read independently because they feature like different stories and main characters But you'll see like recurring characters, which is very very cool and also has romance in it as well, which I really love Hey Luca, he's just chilling Anyway, I am back home now, done dog sitting. Last night I read page 456 and I am so happy at what happened. Basically with the romance subplot, I was starting to get a tiny bit annoyed because there was kind of like a miscommunication trope going on. Basically, if like two characters just sat down and had an honest conversation, the romance subplot would have been resolved. And that was a little frustrating. So that plot point has finally been resolved, which I'm so happy about. I was afraid that that wouldn't be resolved to like the end of the book. And I was like, I don't know if I can read 700 pages of miscommunication. I also wanted to show you guys how cool of an addition this book is. So we've got this cover and then the jacket is actually reversible. So it's also got this alternate cover in addition to the original one. And if that wasn't cool enough, there is a ton of art in this book, which is so cool to see like the characters and moments come to life. Anyway, I am very last minute going on a trip to Boston tomorrow. So I'm gonna read for a little bit, but then I've got some packing and other things to do. So let's see how much I can read today. Today. Oh my gosh, I did not expect to be sad in this book. I'm like speechless. What just happened? Oh no, okay. <laughs> Something really horrible just happened to a character and I did not expect that at all. And this is one of my favorite characters. He's like so sweet and pure and just such a great person and i love him so much and i cannot believe what just happened to him oh my gosh i want to tell you guys so bad but spoilers no if any of you guys have read this book um please tell me if you know what part i'm talking about i want to talk about it with someone in the comments the thing that's so great about this book and this whole series is they're such great friendships that's one of my favorite things in books ever is incredible friendships but cassandra claire just took our favorite friendships and people and stabbed me in the heart right at this part Hello, it is like four days later. I'm currently in Boston. The whole time I've been here, I've been here alone for work. So I've just been sightseeing alone, walking around alone. So I've been listening to the Chain of Thorns audiobook just the whole time I've been walking around. And I only have five hours left now of the audiobook. And I'm leaving Boston today. I have like six hours of traveling. So I'm hoping I can finish the book today just on the plane. It's like getting so intense now. Like everything we've been reading about for all the past books is like finally coming together. And I think there's gonna be like a big 
crazy explosive ending. What I think is really cool about this series is we have two main characters, Cordelia and James, but there's so many side characters and like friendships and like throughout the three books, we've gotten to like add more friends along the way. So we just know so many characters now and they all have their own side plots going on and I'm invested in all of the side plots. So we're going back and forth between like all of the characters and like what they're doing and everything they're doing is working towards the same ending of defeating the bad guy. But I'm also scared because everything they're doing is really dangerous and I just like don't want anyone to get hurt. I love them all so much. But yeah, I am about to head to the airport and I will see you guys probably tomorrow morning when I finish the book. home from Boston and I finished the book. My flight ended up getting delayed by hours. So I had plenty of time to finish the audiobook at the airport. I really liked the book. I think I would say four stars. There was a few things I didn't like, like I didn't love the miscommunication trope. There's also a love triangle I didn't like super care for. And the end is a lot of battle, which also like isn't as much my thing. I don't care that much for like battle scenes, but overall it's like such a great series. If you're looking for a fantasy romance with a huge cast of amazing characters, I love that we have so many characters so we have tons of romance subplots which is cool like there's like so many couples in the series tons of great friendships a great fantasy world and i just think Cassandra Clare's writing style is so pretty. But yeah, that is the end of this video of episode two of me attempting to finish every single series I'm in the middle of. There's definitely gonna have to be an episode three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably because I'm still in the middle of so many series. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.